really intense. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I want to talk about risk assessment. Risk assessment is something that we almost certainly do every single day um, without necessarily realizing it. But first, I want to define assessment. Assessment, a systematic process of evaluating the potential risks that may be involved in a projected activity or undertaking, such as driving a car, or buying a new car, or carrying a gun, considering buying a gun. All of these things are a potential risk assessment. If you're going to get in a car to drive, you might not realize that you're going through a risk assessment because you have already gone through that risk assessment in your mind. You've decided that it's important for me to drive my vehicle today because I have things that I need to get done and my vehicle gets me from point A to point B and it allows me to say, live more life on any given day. And if we've decided to buy a firearm, a lot of the times that's because we've chosen to purchase it for the potential use of self-defense. Maybe we're just getting into firearms for the first time and we're wanting something that can help us to defend our home if somebody were to ever enter it without our permission with the intent to cause us death or great bodily harm. The risk assessment that we likely went through when we made that choice was, well, adding a gun into my life might add some level of risk, but not having a gun in that situation adds a level of risk to myself and my family that I'm not willing to undertake. The truth still remains though, that when we introduce a gun into our lives, we are introducing risk into our lives. A gun is something that is a really, really big responsibility. And if we don't take that responsibility with weight and we don't consider the potential negative outcomes and ways to prevent them, then we can potentially put ourselves in a situation that could honestly change the course of our lives. And actually same goes for if you get into a car. When we get into a vehicle, we're introducing a level of risk into our lives. We are not unlikely to get into a car accident. Lots of people get in car accidents every year. Lots of people die in car accidents every year but something that we've done as people because we want to continue living and we want to also still drive cars is we've designed things like seatbelts and airbags. And as responsible car owners, responsible drivers, we wear our seatbelts, we potentially purchase vehicles with more safety features, especially maybe if we have kids in our car and maybe we're buying a new car. Um, maybe we consider things like the safety features a little bit more um, because we have more souls in the back seat that we want to protect and pay attention to. We also do things like avoiding getting behind the wheel drunk. Um, we don't let our friends get behind the wheel drunk. We also don't or should not be on our phones when we're in the vehicle. Maybe it's acceptable to talk on the phone with a hands-free device, um, but we most certainly avoid texting while we're driving or looking down at our screen as much as we possibly can um, while we're driving because that introduces a much higher level of risk than we would otherwise be accepting if we were driving with our full attention on the road. So the point of that example is to essentially paint this picture where if we're driving down the road and we have our seatbelt on, we have all the safety features possibly available on a vehicle, our, say our phone is in the back seat, we have not had a lick of alcohol or any other substance throughout the day, we are just about as alert as we possibly could be behind the wheel, that risk that we're at for a vehicle accident is lower than it would be if we were say doing even two of those things. Say we're texting while we're driving and maybe we're speeding or we're texting while we're driving and we don't have our seatbelt on. The person who's texting and driving without a seatbelt has a much, much higher likelihood of dying in a car accident that they're also more likely to have because of what they're doing than the person who is fully alert behind the wheel. And the same thing goes for people who introduce a firearm or multiple firearms into their home and depending on what kind of people they have living in their house. So I am potentially at a lower risk for negative outcomes with firearms in my home because I don't have a single child living with me. But for people who do have children living with them, they can take certain steps to mitigate the negative outcomes that are possible when you introduce a gun into your house. They can do things like as soon as the gun leaves their body, it goes into a locked safe. 
They can do things like teaching their children about gun safety and teaching them about what they ought to do if they were to encounter a gun. The likelihood of that person experiencing a negative outcome with uh, say a child gaining access to a gun, their likelihood of that happening is significantly lower than the person who has children living in their home and say they have guns staged all around their house for home defense purposes and none of those guns are locked up or have done really anything beyond placing them out of reach um, to make them inaccessible to unauthorized users. And even beyond that, there are things that we can do and steps that we can take to mitigate risk and mitigate negative outcomes when we choose to carry a gun on our person. And honestly, in large part, that's what this channel is all about. My goal is to, again, share with you guys as I'm learning and going through this process myself, I only started carrying a gun about two years ago. And I want to share that process with you guys as I learn. But this channel is also about talking about safety and how to conceal appropriately so that other people can't detect whether or not you're carrying a gun and how to carry a gun safely. It's why I talk about concealment. It's why I talk about holsters and what holsters are not safe and what holsters are safe to use. And I communicate all of those things in order to hopefully mitigate negative outcomes in your life as a concealed carrier. Because as a concealed carrier, as a gun owner, you've chosen to introduce this risk into your life and you get to take that and also take steps to mitigate this risk that you've introduced. So what are some things that we do as concealed carriers to mitigate the risk, say, of a negligent discharge. We do things like selecting a safe holster. And what is a safe holster? Well, a safe holster protects the trigger on both sides. It has adequate retention, has an open mouth. It does not collapse when you take the gun out of the holster and stays attached to your body in such a way that you don't have to be concerned about it coming off even in a high intensity sort of situation. So you essentially, you wanna make sure that your holster can stay on you if you're in a full sprint or rolling around on the ground. It's staying on your person even as you just walk throughout the day and do your daily activities is not enough. We need to make sure that our holster and our gun can stay on us even when we're doing um, dynamic movement. Beyond that, we want to also learn how to handle a gun safely. That's probably one of the biggest ones is learn how to handle a gun safely, learn how to shoot it well, learn how to holster your gun safely and build in what is essentially an unconscious competence. And I've heard so many instructors talk about unconscious competence. It's not something that you get right out of the gate. You can't be handed a gun and all of a sudden have this unconscious competence. You can have someone teach you about gun safety and teach you about how to shoot and all of those things. But at that point, as you're learning, it's a conscious competence. You have to think about it in order to do it safely. But the goal is to eventually get to a place where you're not having to actively think, okay, when I'm not shooting, my finger is high and on the register on the slide. You eventually wanna to get to a place where that's just automatic. You don't even have to think about doing that. Your finger just goes right up onto the slide once you're done shooting. Also, the fundamental rules of firearm safety are a way that we mitigate risk and reduce negative outcomes. And there's a reason that all of those rules are in place and each of us, at least hopefully each of us, has taught those rules as we become new gun owners. Because essentially, if we're following all of those rules at the same time, nobody can get hurt. Those rules exist to mitigate risk and reduce negative outcomes for people who are handling firearms. So knowing that those rules exist to mitigate the risk of negative outcomes, we can also draw the conclusion that as we add more layers of safety, we are actually reducing our likelihood of being a statistic or introducing a negative outcome into our life. And I'm not encouraging us to carry an unloaded gun because carrying something that is loaded is just way too dangerous. I'm encouraging us to just be mindful of how we're handling our firearms. And if we have the opportunity to do something that potentially helps us to avoid those negative outcomes, then there's no reason for us to not. Or in that moment, then we can consider that risk assessment. For example, Holstering safely. Holstering safely is something that, I don't know that I've talked about a ton on this channel, but it's something I address a whole lot over on my Instagram. And holstering safely, at least the techniques that allow you to do so, are not necessarily um, a, a norm, but it's something that can actually really help us avoid seriously negative outcomes, um, but it, it's just not necessarily something everyone does. And so my goal with this video is to 
encourage you to consider your risk assessments and consider whether or not you might be actually introducing more risk into your life and potentially increasing your likelihood of a negative outcome, like a child gaining access to a firearm or a negligent discharge from happening. Risk assessment is something that was introduced to me a little over a year ago by a friend. And it was something that, again, I was doing on a daily basis but I didn't realize that I was doing it on a daily basis. And just having someone make me aware that I'm doing that helps me to actually intentionally choose to consider what my risk assessment is. I really hope that this video wasn't me just rambling on and on and on about risk assessment, negative outcomes, all of these things. Um, this is a topic that I've really wanted to talk about for a long time but I feel that it's something that can be difficult to explain, especially when you're not talking face to face with someone and interacting with them and talking about what they think their negative outcomes could potentially be or what their risk assessments are and kind of answering questions as you go and asking questions as you go. It's a conversational topic. And so I think it's difficult in my opinion to make a video about this, but I think that it's really important and it's something that I really wanted to share with you guys. And I'm interested to hear what your guys' comments are like. I'm interested to hear what your guys' risk assessments look like. If these are things that you've considered as a gun owner or as a concealed carrier and what things you do to mitigate negative outcomes in your life, mitigate risks in your life. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about firearms. I use plenty of examples today, specifically with vehicles that help us to mitigate risk in our lives, like wearing a seatbelt, choosing modern vehicles with safety features and all of those things. So again, this is a pretty conversational topic. And so I'm interested to hear what your guys' comments are like. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope that it was helpful for you and I'll see you in my next one. <laughs>